Hello, good day students. Today you are going to learn about five main poetic devices found in the poem Big Match 1983 by the Sri Lankan poet Yasmin Gorath. by Yasmin Gunaratna is looking back at a grim period of time in Sri Lankan history. It is called Black July. As it is a little bit of a historical event, modern day students find it hard to decipher its meaning sometimes. The aim of this pause to help the students to understand five main poetic devices with examples. After watching this video, you will be better confident in reading and understanding the poem. So the first poetic device we are going to look into is irony. Irony plays a major role in and throughout the poem, mainly to criticize the incident and its root causes. As we know, by now irony is of threefold. There are situational irony, dramatic irony and verbal irony. We find situational and verbal irony in the poem Big Match 1983. So let's see them in the poem. Big match. The title is itself situational irony. We expect the poem to be about a sports match, but it's not something like that. Instead of that, poet introduces a huge match stick, which is used to light fire. This usage of the same word to get different meaning is called word play or word pun in literature. If it is a big match stick, it should create a big flame. A big flame can create a huge fire, isn't it? According to the poem, it is the racial violence that outbroke in the year 1980. This long extract ironically shows the desperate and vulnerable nature of the victims of communal rights that outbroke in that period of time. This dialogue is uttered by the mayor in the tall house with all books and pictures. He casually speaks about his predicament with a neighbor through telephone. Though he says things are okay, the truth behind the utterances tells another story. He says, not a dull moment. No one complains of boredom. Though through that, he wants to tell the frequency of mob attacks and violence in the society. He introduces the mob as your brave lads to ridicule the false bravery of people on innocent civilians. He introduces the violent activities as another day of fun and games. As he says, the violent activities are mere games for enjoyment for these mobs. So this whole extract is verbal irony. That whole extract shows something opposite of what is said. That is called verbal irony, as you already know. Here we see in the quotation, stout man is brutally attacked by his neighbors under a bow tree. The situation line is here is neighbors normally help each other in a chaotic situation. But what really happens here is neighbors have become the victimizer instead of saviors. And to deepen the irony, the writer uses under the bow tree. Bow tree is said to be a sacred place for Buddhists and they bullying a person under the same place they worship questions the people's morality and the qualities of humanity. Next poetic devices we are going to discuss is metaphors. As you already know, metaphors are direct comparison of something to something else. For example, to attribute bravery, one can address another like you are a liar. At the beginning of the poem, you can find very important two metaphors. So the first one we find is racial pot. This is comparing the racial or communal conflict to a pot which is boiling and spilling over at the moment of speaking. This racial pot means the gradual development of ethnic crisis between majority of Sinhalese versus Tamil minority in the country due to various reasons. 
After a few plunges in 1983, the culmination outbroke. The newspaper headline is used to announce this event. So it is brought through the poem at the beginning. The second one is sacrificial fire. By looking at it, we are reminded of Sati Puja in India. That is a practice where a wife walks into the funeral fire, sacrificing her life after the death of her husband. But uh, in the poem, it means the communal rights that outbroke in 1983. The gradual dispute germinated between two races, burst out in an island-wide massive scale, making the country itself a sacrificial fire for the nation. The third poetic device we find in the poem is allusion. There are some geographical and time allusions in the poem. That means to understand the poem better, the reader has to have an idea why those places and years are significant to the main theme in the poem. The places mentioned in the poem most probably are clear to you, but the years and importance of them may be puzzling to you. So if you want to have a better understanding about them, you can read the blog post written by us using the links below. So if you look at the time allusions, there are some years mentioned in the poem, 1983, which is the outburst of Black July, and you already know it. The other years are 1948, 1956, and 1958. 1948 means few years after Sri Lanka having liberation from British government. Three years to be precise. This is where the first spark of communal dispute began, as Wikipedia reveals. After the liberation, most of the fields in Sri Lankan economy were managed by educated Tamil minority. This has hurted the dignity of the majority in the country. So the first spark of dispute and hatred kindled in 1948 as history reveals. In 1956, as the poem says, treacherous politics of language came into play. According to Wikipedia, 1956, the year the Singhal only act was established. Thereafter, Singhal became the language for every official works. This political move was another landmark to deepen the dispute between two races. 1958 was the year the first outburst of communal violence happened, which was fanned several times and came to a sudden climax in 1983, making the whole land is like a graveyard. As poet says, Sri Lanka burns alive. So if you look at the geographical allusions, they are somewhat not hard to understand like this. First one is Toronto, a city in Canada. As history reveals, many Tamil people migrated to Canada during the period of communal rights. And the other one is Oval. It is a famous cricketing ground in England. The Oval is famous for high scoring matches. It is a batting pitch and batsmen score very big runs there. The fourth little device we are going to discuss is imagery. The poem is like a movie with full of moving imagery. It has visual, kinesthetic and auditory imagery created in the poem, more of a complete experience of a documentary regarding the communal rights outbursted in Sri Lanka. There are visual imagery like smashed bicycle and moving kinesthetic imagery like Sri Lanka burns alive and stout man sweating with fear falls to his knees in shower of sticks and stones as well as you find some auditory imagery like clamor in telephone, bristle hundred guns and through this full of imagery Gunaratna led the reader to experience the poem while reading it. Fifth and final poetic device we are going to discuss is symbols. Symbols are sacred messages of poems. In the poem, there are some symbols indirectly referred to things and people in the society. Okay, the first one is all books. In the fourth stanza, you find all books. Books are the symbol of wisdom and knowledge. The people who safeguard ancient knowledge were educated and wise people. Here, the person mentioned in the poem is ready to sacrifice his life to safeguard his intellectual property. Amid of a chaos which has no care for knowledge and wisdom, the valuable historical knowledge can be swept away from the society. According to the historical records, the largest South Asian library, which was in Jaffna, was burned down by the 
mobs in that period of time. Second symbol we find is Kark uniforms. Kark uniform symbolizes the police department or law and enforcement in a country. Blood on their Kark uniform is a strong statement made about the role of law during the communal rights in 1983. The other symbol is Bow tree. Bow tree is a sacred tree for Buddhists. It gave support and shelter for Lord Buddha to attend Supreme Nibbana. People consider it possesses holy powers and do rituals to be free from unknown spiritual forces. Therefore, bow tree in a way symbolic to the Buddhist community. So, violating Buddhist principles under a symbol of Buddhism creates a critical statement about the role of religion at that period of time. So, that's it. And there are more other poetic devices in the poem, like hyperbole, enjambment, word pun, parallelism, euphemism, and simile. So, here's a small task for you. Try to find examples for the poetic devices I mentioned above. Hope the pause is useful to you to understand the poem better. The pause is made strongly for educational purposes only not to promote violence or criticize certain ethnic groups in the country. So before the end, if you have any doubts or things to be added or omitted, please let us know by leaving a humble comment below. Share the video if you find this useful. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to receive notification of our new video post. So until our next video post, bye bye.